Hey guys, what's going on? James here. Welcome back to the second video where I review day one of NFL free agent frenzy where I talk about each conference and talk about some of the winners and some of the losers, some of the contracts I did like and some of the contracts I didn't like. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the AFC. Jesus, the AFC not only had a lot more teams involved in day one of free agency, but they spent a crap ton more money than the AFC. I'm counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 out of the 16 teams in the AFC participated in day one of the free agent frenzy. So let's start talking about some of these deals. Starting off with the Baltimore Ravens. They re-signed tight end Nick Boyle to a three-year, $18 million deal. I don't mind this per se. Nick Boyle has been known for being a blocking tight end, which that is very valuable in the uh, Baltimore Ravens offense. But... For a guy who has zero career touchdowns, you might want to get him a little bit more involved in the passing game, which I think they might end up doing anyway, especially given their current tight end situation being a little bit murky, all things considered. So I do like what the Baltimore Ravens did here with this move, even though it was a little bit weird giving a guy who is basically just a blocking tight end $6 million a year. I don't really mind it that much. But moving on to the Buffalo Bills, Frank Gore, one year, $2 million. In my opinion, the best move out of day one of free agency, the best move move hands down Frank Gore for two million dollars for a year you can't beat that he's going from one AFC East team to another AFC East team from the Dolphins to the Bills I like that move a lot for the Bills I think that is a very strong signing not only is Frank Gore still a good power back and he's still shown that he has some good wheels on him but he's just like Terrell Suggs with the Arizona Cardinals a very good veteran leadership for this Buffalo Bills offense which is really really young all things considered so having a guy like that in your offense and just helping everybody from the quarterback Josh Allen to LaShawn McCoy who doesn't really need help that much to some of these wide receivers you know it's going to do wonders I feel that Frank Gore is going to be a strong locker room leader for that offense 100% they also signed Kevin Johnson former Houston Texans cornerback although we don't know the details of that deal fine signing I'm okay with it they needed some help in their secondary and then they signed tight end Tyler Croft to a three-year 18 million dollar deal I like this move very strong signing I feel Croft is a very underrated tight end and I feel he's going to be a very good replacement for a guy like Charles Clay and I think that you know given his age he's still relatively young so I feel that he'd be a very good receiving option 100% and finally you have center Mitch Morris the biggest signing from the Bills four years 44 million dollar deal making 11 million dollars a year highest paid center of the league at least until Matt Pardis probably signs his deal again another strong signing one of the biggest needs that the Bills probably had was along their offensive line specifically at the center position that's no longer a need Mitch Morris is a a very good center in my opinion and I feel that he's going to be a very strong anchor for this Buffalo Bills offensive line for the next four years so another move I like a lot I feel that the Buffalo Bills actually did a pretty darn good job in spending the big money when they needed to and also getting some very insane value that that Frank Gore deal is awesome it's absolutely awesome that might be one of the better moves of free agency period so like that move a lot moving on now to the broncos and they spent a lot of money as well first move that they did was they signed former houston texans cornerback kareem jackson to a three-year 33 million dollar deal obviously getting rid of bradley roby they're you're kind of getting a more assured thing in the form of kareem jackson i like the move a lot i think that it'll be fine and adding another very solid veteran piece to that already still very potent Denver Broncos defense and then finally former Miami Dolphins tackle Jawan James is getting a four-year 51 million dollar deal 13 million dollars Jesus they're spending a lot of money on Jawan James but I feel it's pretty darn necessary offensive line was a humongous need for the Denver Broncos last year and they addressed it in a huge way getting a very solid right tackle in Jawan James Moving on to the Indianapolis Colts now they have time to correct their misgivings and their wrongdoings but right now Jesus they did not have a good day one of free agency they have so much money and I applaud Chris Ballard GM of the Indianapolis Colts for being patient they already have a playoff ready team they obviously went to the playoffs they don't have to do a whole lot to really improve their roster besides just having a phenomenal draft and signing some role players like they've been doing for the past couple of years but Devin Funches, one year, $13 million. This, in my opinion, is probably the worst signing of possibly all of free agency. Certainly the worst signing in day one. I believe there's another team that will be coming up here in a second that might have them uh, at a run for their money. But one year, $13 million for a very 
very average wide receiver in Devin Funches, who has had his good moments, but he's certainly not been the big time, big threat wide receiver that the Carolina Panthers needed him to be. You hope things improve in Indianapolis with a guy like T.Y. Hilton and Andrew Luck, who I feel have a way better situation going on than what's going on in Carolina. But right now, geez, that's a lot of money for a guy who really hasn't done a whole lot to deserve that kind of contract. But moving on from that, you have the Jacksonville Jaguars who signed Nick Foles to a four-year, $88 million deal. What is in the water in the AFC South? This is crazy. You have the Indianapolis Colts who are massively overpaying Devin Funches, and then you have the Jacksonville Jaguars who are probably bidding against themselves, all things considered, who are massively overpaying Nick Foles, $22 million a year. And I get it, Nick Foles, he is probably going to end up being a solid middle-of-the-pack quarterback he obviously won the Super Bowl MVP and defeated the giant that is the New England Patriots in the Super Bowl and that was a great story but Nick Foles man aside from that one miraculous playoff run that he had what has Nick Foles done that shows you this guy can be our guy for the next few seasons and it's not like it's just a couple of years experiment or they can get rid of Nick Foles after one year they gave him 50 million dollars guaranteed Nick Foles is not going anywhere so why would you give him 22 million dollars a year I don't get it you're pretty much stuck with Nick Foles now I do think he is a upgrade from Blake Bortles but I think a lot of quarterbacks are an upgrade from Blake Bortles at this point so I feel like you really could have gotten some better options out there especially possibly in the draft maybe you're going to draft a rookie and groom him behind Nick Foles but at that point when the rookie is ready to take over for Nick Foles, be it after a year or two, you're going to be paying a backup quarterback $22 million. But, you know, right now it was a move that needed to happen, but I really think the Jaguars could have gotten some better value here for sure. But moving on to Kansas City, and this is probably one of the better signings, in my opinion, from the AFC. Tyron Matthew gets a three-year $42 million deal, $14 million, same deal that Landon Collins got. And, you know, I did say in the NFC video that Landon Collins did get overpaid. And I do feel that Tyron Matthew is a more valuable safety, in my opinion, than Landon Collins. And I love both of them to death. I absolutely love both of them. Two of my top favorite safeties in the league, if not my two top favorite safeties in the league. But you might have overpaid a little bit for Tyron Matthew, but for how versatile he is and pairing him up with that really awesome Kansas City Chiefs defense that did lose a couple of pieces and could lose a couple of more pieces later on down the line. But putting him in a scheme with a guy like Andy Reid, you gotta love that. You gotta love Andy Reid and his coaching staff. They're gonna take phenomenal care of Tyron Matthew. And given how versatile he is, not just as a safety, but as a slot cornerback as well, he's gonna do pay dividends, I feel. I think that he's gonna earn very close to the money that he's given, if not earn more than he was given. You know, I wanted him on the Buccaneers so badly, but he goes to the Kansas City Chiefs here in a move that I feel was probably one of the better moves of day one of free agency. To the Miami Dolphins, Dwayne Allen, two years, seven million dollar deal. They're gonna make a couple of low key signings. They're building up for next season's draft with that phenomenal quarterback class with Tua Tulavatu or whatever his name is. That phenomenal quarterback from Alabama. That's what the Dolphins are building up for. So that's what fans should expect at this point. Moving on to their friends in the NFC East or AFC East. Sorry, you have the New York Jets. They signed two really big names, Anthony Barr, which we do not know the details of. I think is a very risky signing probably one of the more riskier signings of day one of free agency I'm very nervous for the Jets and how this pans out because this could either go really good or really bad Vikings fans did not seem necessarily too impressed by Anthony Barr now he's going to be rushing the passer a whole lot more we'll see how that works out I hope it works out for the Jets but hopefully they're not giving him too much money we'll just have to wait and see on that one and then Jamison Crowder three year 28 and a half million dollar deal nine and a half million dollars not too bad I guess I suppose that's an okay deal. Um, you know, Jameson Crowder was one of the better slot corners. He does have a lot of injury concerns that you have to work through, but getting more weapons for Sam Darnold and building around him, that's the key to the Jets' success, in my opinion. They also traded for guard Kelechi Simile a couple of days ago, so I think the Jets' offense is doing fine now. You have Robbie Anderson. Maybe you bring back Jermaine Curse. Maybe you don't. Who knows? But now you have Jameson Crowder and Quincy Inunua. Things are going fine for the Jets, and they have the money, so why not splash a little bit of cash? to improve your slot wide receiver situation moving on to the Oakland Raiders and worse probably the worst signing in my opinion four years 66 million dollar deal for Trent Brown he's making 16 and a half million dollars a year Jesus 
formerly of the New England Patriots, I don't know if Trent Brown's going to do good. I don't know if he's going to be that super awesome top five tackle that a lot of people perceived him to be with the New England Patriots, but this move could go really bad. I already feel that the Oakland Raiders overpaid for a guy like Trent Brown, and I know personally from my experience with uh, paying for left tackles so far, a lot of people have said, well, this makes the Donovan Smith deal with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers look good because he's only making $13.75 million a year compared to the 16 and a half that Trent Brown is now making now. I think both those guys are going to be overpaid in my opinion, at least until they prove that they deserve that kind of money. So much like what's going on in Tampa Bay, the pressure for Trent Brown is going to be huge astronomical so we're just gonna have to wait and see how that move turns out and then they also signed lamarcus joiner to a three-year deal worth ten and a half million dollars a season like this move a whole lot more i feel that lamarcus joiner could have gotten a lot more money all things considered especially coming from the super bowl bound st louis rams they obviously didn't win but they made it and that's pretty impressive and lamarcus joiner did some really good things he's a good safety he's still relatively young i believe he's 27 years old this is a signing that I think can work out really well for that uh, Oakland Raiders defense. They still got to get some pass rushers, but I'm sure they'll do that in time. But yeah, not a bad signing at all at the safety position. They needed help in the secondary. They need help in everything on the defensive side of the ball. And I feel that this is a really good start. Pretty decent value signing, in my opinion. And then finally, moving on to the Tennessee Titans. Kenny Vaccaro, four years, $26 million deal. Another really good signing, in my opinion. I thought that the Tennessee Titans did a pretty darn good job here. Signing Kenny Vaccaro for a pretty relatively cheap deal. $6.5 million a year. Good value, in my opinion. And then finally, Adam Humphreys. I can speak, you know, former Tampa, you know, former Tampa Bay Buccaneer. I'm a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan. I love Adam Humphreys. I think that the Titans are going to be getting an awesome slot wide receiver. One of the best slot right wide receivers in the league. I don't care what anybody says. I think he's even better than Jamison Crowder. Four-year, $36 million deal, $9 million a season. Not bad under any circumstances. I feel he's going to be very valuable. It all depends on how you use him because I've seen the Tennessee Titans offense, and I have not been particularly impressed by it under any circumstances. I feel that they definitely need a lot of work in terms of their wide receiver core, and especially Marcus Mariota needs to figure things out fast and I feel he should hopefully use Adam Humphreys like a safety blanket I don't know the play calling for the Titans has been miserable for the past couple of years so hopefully it improves there but I like this signing a lot personally I was a big Adam Humphreys fan I feel that he's also a very strong locker room leader as well so good signing so yeah a couple of really bad signings but also a couple of really good signings as well Frank Gore Kyler, uh, Tyler Croft from the Bills. I love that a lot. Couple of head scratchers. Devin Funches, really bad deal for the Colts. I have no idea how that one's going to turn out. Same with a guy like Trent Brown from the Oakland Raiders, Los Angeles Raiders, whatever you're going to call him. And like Anthony Barr. A lot of risks from those three teams. The Jets, the Raiders, and the Colts. We'll see how those pan out. And same with the Jacksonville Jaguars with Nick Foles. A lot of iffy signings from those four teams. We'll have to see how some of that pans out. But some very good signings as well. Tyron Matthew, like I said, Frank Gore, Tyler Croft. I really like the uh, LaMarcus Joyner signing and the Kenny Vaccaro and Adam Humphrey signings. Those are some really good moves in my opinion. But obviously, free agency continues on with day two and everything that is included with that. So there's going to be a lot of awesome moves continuing on in the NFL of free agent frenzy. So let me know what you guys think about all of the AFC moves down in the comment section below. Do you like them? Do you hate them? Let me know what you think about your team in particular and the signings that they have made so far up to this point. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you all enjoyed. And as always, I'll see you in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.